Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Easy Mini Painting with me, Christopher Ridge, and we're going to be knocking out more of the Resident Evil 2 board game. This time, uh, somebody specifically on the channel, I'm sorry, I forget the username, I forget who requested it, uh, wanted to see Birkin painted. So I figured, shoot, let's just move right on. Yeah, let's just get the big boy himself knocked out. So this is Birkin Stage 3. Without any further ado, why don't we just get on to it? Now the first thing that I started with was a layer of dark stone, and I figured that that would be a pretty good base coat for Birkin Stage, stage 3 here. Because as I was looking it up online, I thought, okay, what is the color scheme for this guy supposed to be? Because I've seen a lot of different things. And I think that if we look at the original gameplay footage of Resident Evil 2, and even some of the... Uh, you know, other gameplay footage from other games like Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles and that kind of thing. I think the whole thing is that he's supposed to have like a very dark color scheme with uh, some like uh, whites or grays or silvers kind of coming off of his uh, like limbs. And then you get like some orange or red on his actual like hands and then his claws are supposed to be sort of like white and that kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, white you know, claws and a white head and that kind of thing. So, we're, what we're gonna stick with is is that dark sort of color palette. So we're gonna stick with dark stone for the base coat, and then I also just knocked out the base while I was down here too. I just used matte black for that. But after you get a nice even coat of dark stone on there, we are gonna move on to all of the limbs. And for that, I'm gonna take out some ash gray, and that will be used to sort of lighten up the limbs and sort of give them that not quite white, but, you know, that sort of rainy gray kind of color to it. I would also just use a, a larger brush. It doesn't really matter because you're you're not going for any details whatsoever right now. So I'm just using some off-brand, no-name, big, thick brush right here. And you also probably don't want to get too much paint under your brush because the whole thing is that you're going to be sort of slowly blending it the further you get to the torso of the miniature. Because it's like, it's like the whole center mass is supposed to be sort of like black or gray and uh, as, it, as it's sort of like you know, goes outward towards, it lim towards its limbs, or his limbs, I guess? I have no idea. I, I don't really know the, the story behind Birkin or anything like that. It kind of gets a little bit gray. Um, so I'm actually going to not bother with the feet because we're going to use uh, some red for that. But basically, all you're going to do, or at least all that I'm going to do here, is just take a little bit of this gray color like this and just sort of, you know, apply it you know, nice and evenly at the base of the legs, but then as you work up the legs, as you work upwards towards the torso, and as you work closer towards the torso, you're gonna notice that your brush, or or that, uh, or that your color is gonna start to like slowly fade up there. My brush is also a little bit wet right now too. If you want, you could add just a little bit of water to your brush, not too much. You, like, if you want, you could just take your brush like this and sort of dip it into your cup of water like so you know whatever and then you know just use like a, a paper towel or something like this here to just sort of you know wipe it off right and that way the brush is still kind of damp it's not you know wet uh, but it's not dry uh, it, it's just a little bit damp and that will make it so that you can kind of blend the color a little bit more as you go so again you're just gonna start at sort of like the base right here and you're just going to you know work your way upward and as long as you do have a slightly wet brush, you know, a slightly damp brush, then it will sort of blend a little bit as you work upward, like so. It's a little bit of a more advanced technique. I don't tend to do it myself. I tend to stick with just, you know, solid colors and then quick shades or, uh, or dry brushing, but uh, it's something that you can kind of get some practice in. And if you want to, you can even just do like, if you're familiar with dry brushing because you've seen me talk about it, you know, on this channel or on previous channels before, then you know what to do there. Uh, you know, what you can do is you can just sort of, yeah, just sort of apply it and just sort of retain the darkness of, of the, uh, the base skin tone the further you get to the torso, but you know, you're just sort of blending a little bit of, a little bit of gray into it a little bit something like that as you can kind of see like about where it gets to the thigh it starts to blend a little bit more into the darker skin tone so we're just going to do that with all of the arms and legs and all that kind of stuff and when you're doing the hands like this don't worry about getting any paint onto the claws and all that it'll be just fine because we're going to go over the claws with uh, like a mummy robes color later on, so the claws will be lightened up pretty substantially. So you don't have to worry about, you know, accidentally getting a little bit of this gray color onto 
the claws, it'll be just fine. All right, as you can kind of see, I'm not really worrying about getting the whole hand covered in this gray color, but that's because we're gonna go over it with a uh, with a, with an orange color a little bit too, because there's just a little bit of coloration on like his hands and his feet, you know, just just a little bit. Again, like the, the further you get away from the torso, the more sort of like color starts to show up a little bit, I think. Like the center of it is supposed to be very dark, and uh, as, as it spreads throughout the rest of his body, it sort of lightens up a little bit. All right, and just a little bit something like that. And now you've just got a nice sort of dark base, but it sort of lightens up a little bit as you get away from the core of the miniature and down all of the limbs and that kind of thing. I could probably lighten up this leg here just a little bit, so why don't I do that? Just add a little bit again. It's sort of like a dry brushing kind of thing, but you're just applying a little bit of paint. You barely want any paint on your brush at all. Again, you're just getting like a little bit on there. And again, I would recommend just using like, like I said, an old sort of like ratty no-name brush for this. And I think that that'll do you just fine. Yeah, there we go, all right. Like I said, a little bit of something like that. So I'm gonna rinse off my brush. All right, and now we're gonna start adding some color. Like I said, I wanna lighten up all of the actual appendages, like the hands and the feet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out some nice bright lava orange, actually. Now, be a little bit careful. You know, you don't wanna go too overboard with this, but I think that this will do a pretty good job of lightening some stuff up. And I think what I'll start with, actually, is like a, a smaller brush. You know, I'll, I'll use like a miniature base coat brush, this kind of thing right here. And I think what we'll use that for, first off, while we've got our brush, you know, nice and nice and fresh, is we're going to paint the eyeball. Or eyeballs, I guess. Yeah, there are a couple of eyes. So the first thing is the really, really big prominent one that's on his shoulder right here. And be a little bit careful because you don't want to... Oh, hard to get at an angle uh, with this and show it off. Because you don't want to apply this orange onto the, like, the skin but you want that eyeball to be nice and bright. You want that eye to be really, really prominent. There we go, that's a good angle. All right, and just take your time with it. All right, just like that, you got the, that nice eyeball there, nice and orange, nice, okay. And I, this might be kind of hard to see, but I think he's also got another eye actually on his leg. You can kind of see it right there on his left thigh. So what we'll do is we'll just Touch up that really quickly as well. Just take your time with it. I would also say too that this eye is not nearly as noticeable. So if you just want to completely leave it, you don't want to uh, address it at all. I don't think anybody's going to notice. I don't think anybody's going to care. But if you want just a little bit of extra credit, then I would say go for it. So I'm going to go for it right here. And it's something to keep in mind for when you are painting this miniature. And if you just want to leave it be, that's fine too. All right, a little bit something like that. We might also go over the eye again with another layer of orange. But what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the actual limbs. And like I said, I'm going to start with the, the feet and the hands. I'll start with the feet because, you know, I want to be a little bit careful with the brush. Because we are going to use that big ratty brush to uh, sort of blend it a little bit into the rest of the limbs. But just sort of... You know, use a slightly more detailed brush like this one, you know, just, just slightly, not like super detailed, but a slightly more detailed brush like this one, just so that you avoid getting some orange onto the base. It also doesn't really matter too much, just on the grounds that you could do the base after you complete the miniature. I just kind of got ahead of the curve a little bit and decided, well, I'm just going to paint the base before I do anything else. But that's up to you. If you want to do that before or after, it doesn't really matter. All right, a little bit something like that. And once again, I'm gonna go over the eye again with just a second coat of this lava orange just to make sure that it's a nice crisp color, a nice even coat, or at least more even than, than you know, just one single coat. And the same thing with the one on his thigh here. Like so, just a little bit like that. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse that brush off and we are going to move back to that larger brush. And like I said, we're just going to do the sort of blending game again a little bit. So you just get a little bit of paint onto the tip of your brush like that. You don't really want too much. But you're just going to sort of lightly blend upward. Or, you know, closer to, you know, with regard to the legs, you're going to start blending upward. Like this, just a little bit. There you go. Nothing too fancy, but just something that's a little bit noticeable.
All right, a little bit something like that. You can kind of see that the orange starts to blend upwards and into the gray just a little bit. And we're going to do the same thing with all the hands. All right, a little bit something like that. So now you've got a nice sort of color palette, you know, that, like I said, just, just a little bit of sort of a natural skin color, but also just a little bit, you know, orange and weird and creepy and biohazard looking. If I can get it to focus a little bit, that's not too bad. There you go. A little bit something like that. That's pretty cool. All right. Yeah, I think that that'll do just fine. So I'm going to rinse that off. Next up, we're going to move on to all of the claws and the teeth and the head. He's got like his wet, his head is kind of white a little bit, actually. So what we'll do is we'll take out some mummy robes. This isn't a matte white color, but it's close to it. It's sort of like an off-white kind of thing, but I like it. It's a cool color. And I think what I'll start with first, actually, is that head. I think that I'll take the, you know, the base coat brush just for the sake of using a little bit more detail. And what we'll do is we'll try to paint everything but the inside of the mouth and just sort of the surrounding areas of the face. I would say that you don't need to worry too much about making it too detailed. If you want, you can sort of make the white blend into the, the dark stone color just a little bit. Or if you want to just have it, you know, cut off at a certain point, like at the chin, and around the skull or something like that. That's fine too. It's just kind of whatever you prefer, but I'm just going to kind of make it up as I go here a little bit, and I think that it'll be a-okay. So let's just kind of do this. Let's paint his teeth. Again, like basically everything but the actual interior of the mouth, I'm gonna paint white. And then here we go. As we start to get to the back of the head here, we will, I, I think I'll just blend it downward a little tiny bit, nothing too much. So, you know, I'll just get a little bit of paint onto the tip of my brush and just sort of start at the top and just sort of work my way down evenly across the whole back of the head. And as you kind of come down like this, it will start to sort of blend like so. I'll even get just a little bit of water onto the tip of my brush. I just dipped the tip of my brush into my water just a little bit, but then wiped off a lot of it. And that will sort of start to soften everything just a little bit. All right, a little bit something like that. It's a very, very ghost white head, but it starts to blend downward a little bit on the back. That's the kind of thing that I'm looking for there. All right, and while we're here and while we were using this same brush, why don't we go ahead and knock out all of the weird sort of like teeth in the center of his chest. Now, if you want, you can go about this in a couple of ways. You can either paint each individual little tooth or you can just kind of go over the whole thing like I'm doing right here. I would say that for the sake of an easy paint job, I would just do what I'm doing right here where you're just kind of going over all of it because when you use the quick shade at the end of this whole thing, it should fill in all of the gaps and it should sort of bring out all of those individual teeth, claw, whatever they are kinds of things. And that should make it all look pretty complete. So don't be afraid to just sort of apply a nice even coat of this mummy robes or matte white or whatever color that you want across the whole chest. And as you use the quick shade, that will help to separate each little tooth, each little claw and add some shade and depth. All right, a little something like that. There you go, now that's nice and white. That is very, very defined. All right, so now we're just gonna do the same thing. We're going to use the same color for all of the claws. And again, I would use this same brush here just to, um, you know, knock it out relatively quickly, but also be able to have clear lines in between the claws and the flesh. Like so, you know, that's like, that's, that's it for the little thumb there. So let's get the rest of this hand. All right, just a little bit something like that. And get that gets those claws nice and uh, nice and white, nice and claw looking. Um, I, I think I'm just gonna speed up everything here, but yeah, you're just gonna do that with all of the claws at this point, which might take a few minutes, but you know, no big deal. All right, and a little bit something like that. So now we've got the claws 
nice and white there. There's really not a lot else to do. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, apply some details and apply some shade. Now, I think you got one of two ways that you can do the next couple of things. You can either, what I wanna do is I wanna take out some red and I want to dot the eyes and I also wanna get like the blood vessels and the pupils on the big eyes on the side there. Um, but I, that's the thing is that I don't know if it's going to be more effective to do the shade first and then the details afterward, or if you want to do the detail first and then the shade afterward. I think what we've done with all of the pre... Tell you what, how about we do just... Uh, just For the sake of doing things a little bit differently from the previous miniatures, we'll go ahead and apply the quick shade first, let it dry, then do some detail work, and we'll see how that works out. So what I'm going to do... Oh, dropping stuff what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use dark tone and I think that that will do just fine because it's it is a very very dark miniature it's a very dark model so you can use strong tone but I feel like the brown color there would kind of put it off just a little bit so we'll use strong tone uh, for, or st st strong strong tone dark tone geez we'll use uh, dark tone if you don't have this if you don't have like the you know the big you know fancy army painter mega paint set what you could use in its place is this reaper Nuln oil that's pretty much the same thing that sort of shade right there and it's just it's just a very dark shade that's all that it is and i'm also just going to use a big fat no-name brush right here nothing nothing too worried about or anything like that and you're just going to apply this very evenly across the entire miniature and that will fill in all of the muscle tissue that will fill in all of the little you know details everything like that as you can kind of see it's uh it's starting to separate those teeth a little bit like we were talking about that's the sort of thing that we're looking for there and it's really bringing up that that face now that face is uh really showing up and being nice and bright that's the kind of thing that we want that's beautiful that's great okay so we're just going to apply this very evenly and then we're going to let it completely dry and then we are going to work on some details I'll show a little bit of what I'm doing right now just so you can kind of see what the process looks like and all that. But I think that I will just go ahead and uh, skip ahead a little bit here just because this is a very time... Well, not very time-consuming process. This is a slightly time-consuming process. But it's also not very entertaining and uh, not very insightful to watch because it's like, yeah, I get it. You put on the shade. Cool. Move on. Uh, so I'm going to show you just a little bit, you know, kind of, kind of what it looks like as I go. And you can kind of see that it's starting to fill everything in and it's starting to give it more depth and, and color and all that. Oh, yeah. Check out what it does to the eye there. Ooh. Looking right at you now. Nice. That's cool. And we'll kind of show off what it looks like as we go up the arm as well. Because it'll fill in all of that. Yeah, there you go. It's starting to bring out all those details. It's starting to bring out everything and make it look a lot more complete. That's looking great. Okay. Oh, I gotta be careful because the claws are still kind of wet. You know, generally you want to apply your quick shade after everything is completely dry. Um, and some of the claws might still be a little bit wet. But you kind of get the picture. You kind of see what I'm doing here. So yeah, just go ahead and apply this evenly. Let it completely dry and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, he's pretty much completely dry by now. He's still a little, oh, get, get my lighting right a little bit there. That's a little bit better. Okay, he's still a little bit uh, moist in some places, but I think that for the most part, uh, we can do what we want now. And yeah, like I said, we just want to add a little bit of coloration, a little bit more. He's still a little bit flat, so why don't we brighten up some details a little bit? We're going to take out some pure red, just a nice bright red color, and we're going to do some little things with this. One thing that you kind of have the advantage of doing details, uh, one thing that you have an advantage with uh, regarding details after you do your quick shade is that it's easier to see certain things, like uh, the, the sort of blood vessels on the eye there. They're, they're a lot easier to see and they stand out a lot more easily after you do the shade than it would be before. And that's kind of what I wanted to highlight here. So why don't we just go ahead and very lightly go over each little blood vessel with this blood red, or with this uh, pure red color. I don't think you really have to do this, but it's just a nice little sort of extra touch that you can do if you want. 
There you go. So now we've got those those cool blood vessels on that eyeball there. Now he's just really staring at you. That's cool. All right, another thing too is that I want to go ahead and dot the eyes. And again, it's a little bit easier to do this when you've already got the shade around the eyes. It makes it a little bit easier to be able to tell like where to really put your dot. Uh, I'm gonna. I, I want my brush to be nice and and clean here and sharp. You can see again. I'm just using a little tiny detailed brush, but I'm just gonna get a little tiny little itty bitty dot on the tip of my brush there keep your hand really steady rest your hands on like a table or something like that here so i've got my hands on my table or my desk right here and as you can see like keeping your hands completely like leaned against something helps to steady your hands a lot if you keep your hands in the air like this there's just so much more movement you can you can see the difference it's just it's just night and day the difference there so keep your hands rested do it very slowly, very carefully. You don't need to rush it, but I'm just going to really lightly dot a little bit of red onto the eyes. There's one of them right there. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. And the other eye. Just like that. Easy enough. And there you go. See, that gets that gets those nice glowing red eyes on there. That's cool. Look at that. All right. And now just for a little bit of extra credit, what you can do is you can just kind of look for individual like veins or blood vessels or whatever you want to call them. And you can just sort of go over really lightly with those. So like there's uh, some really prominent ones here on his uh, on his left thigh. So why don't we just really lightly go over that. Again, I, I would say that if you don't want to do this, you probably don't have to, but it's just another little extra credit kind of thing. What I'll do is I'll also just paint the pupil on this eye right here. We'll just go over that with a little bit of a red. Right there, just like that. Easy enough, nothing special. And we'll just kind of get sort of surrounding areas of the eye with this color too. Just a little something like that. It just kind of adds a little bit more on there. That's looking pretty cool. All right, let's look for more of those kind of veins. All right, on his like uh, kind of forearm here, you can see another really prominent vein. Yeah, you can kind of do a little bit here, like on the backs of the arms here a little bit. There's a lot, there is a lot of veininess going on on the hands and the arms and all that. So you don't really have to go over like every single little thing, but you can just kind of go over parts that really catch your eye that you're like, oh yeah, I, I kind of want that to be a little bit red. You know, nothing too much. We get this thing on his back right here. It's just a little bit. Like I said, you're just kind of you're just kind of looking for any sort of spots that really jump out at you that you're like, you know what? I kind of want there to be just a little bit of color there. You know, you want just a little bit of red, uh, that kind of thing right there. And that, you know, what? I think that that's pretty much all that I really want to do. I'm not really seeing anything that's anything else that's really jumping out at me. I might get a little bit on this arm right here. Yeah, there's a yeah okay. There's a little bit of a vein right here. A little something like that. There you go. That just gets. A little bit of color on there, a little bit of variety. That's the kind of thing that we're looking for right there. All right, what I'll do too is I'll go ahead and just get the pupil of uh, of this big eyeball here. Let's make it red too. Because I was sort of thinking to myself while I was painting it, while I was, you know, painting the blood vessels here, I was like, do I want the eye, like the pupil on the eye to be red or do I want it to be black? And I think I kind of want it to be red, but I think you can do either one, honestly, just kind of whatever you prefer. There you go, that looks pretty cool. I like that, uh, the nice red there. And again, you've got the same sort of thing on the little eyeball on his thigh right there. And I think that that will about do it. The very last thing that I'm gonna do is the thing that I've done for all the other uh, miniatures as well. And that's that I'm going to apply a layer of matte varnish to it. And you know, like I said previously too, this is another thing that is just optional. You don't have to do it. Somebody actually said in one of the videos that uh, they never use varnish because uh, they said that it sort of eats a, it eats through like the paint that they've done and it can 
you know, I, I honestly forget the comment, but like I would encourage you actually to uh, uh, to go check the comments on whichever whichever video that was about about varnishes. I personally have not experienced the problem that uh, he was describing, but it's just you know something I, I encourage people to sort of get all ends of you know the spectrum when it comes to different things to do for miniatures. So you know you can check that out. But yeah, I'm just going to apply this layer of matte varnish, and then that will be it. Well, there you go, everybody. That is Birkin Stage 3 from the Resident Evil 2 board game. I think that he turned out pretty cool. I really like the sort of dark gray and black sort of color scheme. It really goes well with the sort of the white and the red and all that kind of stuff. I think that that's a, that's a color scheme that works out pretty darn well. Like I said, I've seen some people do the sort of thing where they'll, uh, you know, they'll do just like an all flesh kind of thing, like an all bloody flesh tone kind of thing where it's all red and tan and all that kind of stuff but yeah i think i think that this is a little bit more accurate to the original character model in the original playstation version of the game so there you go if you like the video everybody go ahead and throw it a like if you want to see the rest of the resident evil 2 board game getting painted go ahead and subscribe to the channel i uh, still need to knock out the zombie dogs well i mean i've still got a lot to do I th i've got about half of the board game left to go uh, but i am trying to post these videos every week so you can expect a new video every week i'm not sure what i'm gonna do after the resident evil 2 board game i did order the wolfenstein board game and all of the bonus stuff that comes with that i got that on uh, kickstarter so I will eventually do those, but I don't know how far into the future that is. I don't, I, I don't imagine the, that will get here in the next, you know, couple of months. So we'll have to see. Uh, but yeah, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you like. My handle is the same on both places, which is Paint a Mini. But that'll be about it. So thank you everybody so much for your time. I do appreciate it. I'm glad that uh, I'm able to do this, and I hope that you enjoyed it. And I'm hoping that uh, you're you're feeling motivated to go out there and do some miniature painting yourself. So go out there, have some fun. Have a good night, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.